Hello and welcome to Neurosurgery Written Board Crash Course. My name is Chen and today we'll be talking about a part of the limbic system called the septal area. Now a lot of the information in this video came from this paper in particular and I will copy the link to this PDF file in the description below. Now the septal area is located on the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere nestled inferior to the rostrum of the corpus callosum and anterior to the third ventricle and lamina terminalis. The septal area consists of two gyri and two sulci. The gyris and the sulci. And they're all nearly vertically oriented. Now marked in yellow is the paraterminal gyrus. And marked aqua is the subcolossal area. And the two gyruses are called the anterior and posterior paraolfactory sulci. And you can find the labeling over here in this part of the, of the picture. And this small area over here, the septal area, is contiguous with components of the limbic system curving around the corpus callosum, as well as structures on the inferior surface of the brain, such as the olfactory striae and the amygdalo hippocampal region. Now, in general, you can think of the connections to and from the septal area in two curves. In the inner curve, uh, you can find a structure just above the corpus callosum called indicium grisium. And this structure merges with the paraterminal gyrus. The paraterminal gyrus in turn extends to the inferior surface of the brain, joining with another structure called the diagonal band of Broca. And this structure eventually will lead us into the amygdala. Now in the outer curve, the cingulate gyrus becomes eventually in continuity with the subcolossal area, and they merge together. This then goes on to meet the medial olfactory striae. And we'll cover more about the olfactory striae in the olfactory system video, but in short, the olfactory bulb extends to become into the olfactory tracts, and at the end of it, split to become the medial olfactory striae and the lateral olfactory striae. The lateral olfactory striae is directed across the lateral part of a structure called the anterior perforated substance, right over around here. And then it bends abruptly medially towards the uncus and the hip parahippocampal gyrus. The medial and lateral olfactory striae arise from the posterior aspect of the olfactory tracts, as we talked about, and forms the anterior margin of the anterior perforated substance. Now, since we're on the topic of the anterior perforated substance, let's go over it briefly. The anterior subs perforated substance is located on the base of the forebrain with a boundaries bordered by anteriorly the olfactory trigone, anterior medially the medial olfactory striae, anterior laterally the lateral olfactory striae, posterior laterally 
by the uncas and posterior medially by the diagonal band of Broca and the optic tracts. What gave this structure its importance are the numerous lenticulostriate arteries that supply such areas as the internal capsule and the basal ganglia. And therefore, it's appropriately named due to its perforated appearance over here. Now, if we take a cut of the brain coronally at the level of the anterior perforated substance, we get a picture of this to the right of the screen. And you can see how the basal ganglia is directly above the anterior perforated substance. And hence, the lenticulostriate artery strokes will lead to basal ganglia lesions, as in the case of the lacunar strokes. Now, remember, we talked about this structure called indicium grissium earlier. Now, this structure lies just above the corpus callosum, and it wraps around all the way around. And when we take a look at it from a top-down view, we can see that it is divided into a medial and the to a lateral and a medial longitudinal striae on each side. And this structure loops around and wraps all the way around and eventually will go into the hippocampus. And when you strip the brain away, you can see that this structure, the indicium grisium, loops around and eventually goes into the hippocampus. And in fact, the structure is actually the remnant and the terminal extension of the hippocampus. that connects between the hippocampus and the septal area. Now the septal area has many connections that links itself with the rest of the limbic system, and we've covered a few in this video. The diagonal band of Broca links the septal area with the amygdaloid region. The indicium grisium links itself, links the septal area with the hippocampus. The cingulate gyrus is in direct continuity with the parahippocampal gyrus, which feed, eventually feeds itself into the hippocampus. The precommissural fornix links the septal area with the hippocampus, and we'll cover that in the hippocampus video. The striae medullaris links the septal area with the medial habinular nucleus, and we cover that in the habinulum video. And the medial forebrain bundle links itself, links the septal area with the lateral hypothalamus as well as the brainstem. And we'll cover that in the hypothalamus video. And that's it for the septal area. Again, I will copy the link to the PDF file that I mentioned earlier in the description down below. I hope you find it helpful and we'll see you next time.